listeners. We greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yet again today is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Today, as we open up our session, I ask you to invite somebody to join us. And as we begin, like it is the norm, let's be, dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for yes, your grace. Lord. You are the Lord who reigns over all things. Yes, Lord. We give you praise and glory. Thank you for the gift of life. Yes, thank you for the gift of salvation. Yes, thank you for the message of the cross in our generation. Yes, we Lord. receive your word. Mm. Open our hearts to receive it with meekness, yes, with joy, yes, with celebration. Mm. For it is the word of life today. Yes, and as it goes forth, King of Glory, yes, everyone that hears it, yes, for they will receive life mm. to the praise and glory mm. of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm. Amen. So we will take today's text from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, from verse 12 to verse 17. Let's read. And behold, Lava, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments. That they may have the right to the tree of life. And may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers. And sexually immoral and murderers. And idolaters. And whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you the things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star, and the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him who hears come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. At no cost. There is something captivating about this text. It is the repeated saying of the word come. And it is amazing that the whole of our Christian life is an invitation to come. For example, the spirit of the Lord while we were still in our sins induced us to hear these words of the Lord Jesus in Matthew 11, 28. Where he says, come unto me. All of you that are well. And heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me. For I am gentle. And humble in heart. And you will find and rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden light. Still the invitation is to come. For those that are heavy laden. And when we 
come to him. As we are still in doubt. I will hear this word. That re from the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 1 and verse 18. It says come. Let's reason together. Says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet. They will be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson. They will be like wool. Understanding your position. God still says come. It doesn't matter how faith you are. It doesn't matter how much you are deep into sin. The invitation is still there for us. And when we come to him, Jesus still calls his disciples. Yes, Matthew 16 and 24. He says, if anyone desires to come after me, he must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Again, it is an invitation. It doesn't end when you come to him. Every day of your life, it is an invitation to walk with him. Now you may say, I don't have the qualification. I don't have what it takes. You need to go back to Isaiah 55. Verse 1 to verse 3. He says, Ho everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come. Now we jangu. Buy and eat. Ogulorie. Yes, come buy wine. Jango gule vinyo. And milk without money and without price. Na mata watali sent over muwendo gona. Then he goes on to ask. Na buza. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread? Luachi muro ne simbio gule chechitali mugati. And your wages for that which does not satisfy. Ne pera ya mwe chechita kusa. He admonishes, listen carefully to me. And eat what is good. And let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Here. And your soul shall eat. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. And he says the sure mercies of David. And by grace, we have come. By grace, we listened and followed him. And down the years, the good shepherd, has led us alone, bidding us to continue to come to him. When life overwhelmed us, when all seemed lost, when friends forsook us, when family misunderstood us, when the world hated us for his sake, we had a fountain. We still came to him. And we found in him the fountain of life. I liken the hymn that says, All the way my Savior leads me. And he says, What have I to fear besides? Can I doubt his tender mercy? Who through life has been my guide? Heaven's peace. Divinest comfort. Here by faith in him to dwell. And he says, for I know. Whatever befalls me. Jesus does all things well.
Yes, of your na and Kolanga So it doesn't matter what has befallen you. Since Songambera Tijolimu, Jesus does all things well. Yes, we have your na Kolanga So we have remarkable truth here to lean upon. Twina Mazima Malunja Nyua go Kwesi Gama. We cannot overlook. Our lives, every day of our lives, need to re echo what is written in the book of Psalms. In Psalm 42 and verse 1, the psalmist says, As the deer pants for the water, so my soul pants after you, O Lord. The question I'm asking. Does that define you? So, every day of our lives, we are calling on Him, calling on Him to reign, to reign in our lives, to reign in our marriage, to reign in the hearts of our children, to reign in our families, to occupy every thought of our lives, to establish His glorious home in our lives. Now, if you know nothing about what I'm saying, I cannot explain it to you. You first have to come. You first have to come and see. Then this will be clearly explained to you. You will notice that the Holy Spirit, who is the third member of the Godhead, is here with the bride who represents the church and their invitation is to the Lord Jesus to come. They are calling on Christ to come with all his glory. And let's ponder upon this for a moment. Why would the Holy Spirit call to Jesus to come? The answer is simple. The primary work of the Holy Spirit since the day of Pentecost when he came from the Father as the promise that Christ had given. He had several roles to execute. The first role he had to execute was to convict the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment. And then to guide us that have then come to Christ into all truth concerning Christ's redemptive work and then glorify Christ by transforming those that have believed on him into his image. Now the role has been initiated and the body has now been conformed to the image of Christ. So what he has initiated has now come to the consummation. And the objective of glorifying Christ by his body has now been achieved. So it is befitting at this point in time to call on the Lord to come because the revelation of the work of Christ has been completed. For what began in the Garden of Eden when man was being chased out of the Garden has now been consummated with the man regaining the glory that he lost. And now the church glorified joins the spirit to witness on the Lord to come in his glory. So why does the bride call on the Lord to come? 
Noah Fadji. Because this is what the Spirit has initiated. And it is interesting that when you read the book of Romans, it talks about all creation eagerly waiting for the adoption of the son and the redemption of the body. And as we await the Lord's return with perseverance like it says in Romans 8.25 in 26 the Bible says that in the same way the spirit helps us in our weakness and the idea here is that the spirit is, comes alongside and groans on the inside of us. Groaning for Christ to be exalted. And the Bible goes on, we don't know how to pray. Or how we should. But the Spirit Himself intercedes with for us with groaning too deep for utterance. Friend, have you grown for Christ? Do you long for His appearing? In 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Verse 8, Paul writes to us and he says, Finally, there is laid up for me after he had fought a good fight, after he has completed his course, he says, There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge will give to me on that day. And then he winds up with a beautiful quote. And he says, and not me only, but to all those who have loved his appearance. There is promise to us a reward, a crown of righteousness if we so wait and groan for the day of his appearing. And the second call we see here is the Lord himself calling on to sinners. Those that were chased out of the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3. And access was hindered back to the presence of God. Now the Lord of glory extends his hand and says, Come. He is calling you and I. This is the call for sinners. The sinners who from the beginning ran away from the presence of God. Now the Lord of glory God himself invites them to come. Here he says let everyone who hears come. It is an open call. He's not calling the, the qualified. He's not appealing to a specific class of people. He's not appealing to a certain nation. He's not appealing to a particular color. He's not appealing to people of a particular status in society. No, it is an open invitation to everyone who has ears. Not like the ones he talks about in Matthew 13. Those that have ears but don't hear. Those who have eyes and don't see. No, 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 no. He is talking to those who have the attitude of heart to hear this message and be able to respond 
to eat. In verse 17, I want you to notice what he says. He says, let anyone who is thirsty come. He says, let anyone who wishes to take the water of life at no cost. Let him come. What is the Lord saying here? He uses a metaphor of thirst. And basically what it means is somebody who is spiritually dehydrated. Someone who is craving for salvation. It describes a man and a woman who is at a point of giving up. Who has realized that the chasm between them and God is so wide. And there is no way you can access the maker. Except for his undeserved mercy through Jesus Christ. I'm speaking to a man and a woman who knows that unless you are pardoned, you will perish in the bowels of eternal condemnation. He, I'm talking about someone whose only cry to God is have mercy upon you. You crave to have this relationship with him. And you know that your works will not take you there. You know that you, nothing you can do within your power will earn you that right. Will grant you that access. If you are that thirsty for God, he says come. She says, come. There may be an enmity between you and God. But he still says, come to me. You see, today we are living at a time where people think you can be good. So if everyone is saying you are a good person, then in the eyes of God you qualify. That does not qualify you. In the eyes of God, it is a lie. It is only the righteousness through Jesus Christ that satisfies the wrath of God. This is what Jesus speaks about in his sermon on the mountain. Matthew chapter 5 in verse 6 he says, is blessed are those who hang and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be satisfied. They shall be filled. Why? Because in John 6 35, he comes again and says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me, the key verb there is to come to him. He says he shall not hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst. I want you to see specifically whom this invitation goes to. You see, when you receive an invitation, it is an honor. It is you are an honored guest. When you receive an invitation, and here I'm here to bring you some good news. Jesus invites you. He says, Come. He's calling you. You that is thirsty. And the word that he used here is the word Hotheron. Hotheron is the word that you would bring in the King James Version to mean whosoever will. In other words, if you will, come. 
So it is not about uh, your status in life. They don't have a lists and b lists. He says, whosoever is thirsty, the dying man, come. Jango. That is the invitation. Now you may say, but my sins are great. I can't be pardoned completely today. Because maybe by tomorrow I will have sinned again. And again I will be guilty. Ah, and I will be damned for all eternity. Now listen to me. I want you to understand that there is a fountain of grace that cleanses of all sins no matter how far no matter how, how wretched your life is there is a cleansing that is so thorough that it will wash your hearts renew your soul and through the water of the word satisfy every desire and thirst that's for sin. It will not only cleanse you but it will create you a new heart. You will become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And as a result of that, you will no longer crave the kinds of sins that enslaved you. The question is not your state as the invitation. The question is, are you willing to come. Now you may say, I'm here, but I don't understand all the truth. The invitation is not to question your competence of understanding. You don't have to fully understand all the gospel. It does not say whoever understands. It says whoever will let him come so the point is do you thirst if you thirst then come the understanding will follow you see many of us when we came to the Lord many years ago we came by grace and the power of the Holy Spirit with the heart nothing. We knew nothing except that we were sinners. And we needed a savior in our lives. And we cried out to the Lord to save us. And the understanding has come along the way. When we come to Christ, we come with childlike faith. We don't come with understanding. Now you may say there are too many hindrances for me. My past life, the, the sins that have been dominating my life, the habits that I have. Not only that, if I come to Jesus, I may lose my family. I could lose my spouse. I may lose my friends. I could possibly lose my job. So some of you are saying, I may even lose my life. These obstacles are simply too great. I have wonderful news for you. Look at the invitation again. He says, let everyone who is thirsty, let him take of the water of life freely. 
The key word there is the word let. So basically remove the hindrance. Jesus is saying, if you are only willing to come, I will tear away the hindrances in your life. You see, no man no devil is hindering you. There is nothing that is standing in your way. Though you may actually think there is. Or let me put it this way. The only thing that is hindering you is your own stubborn pride. See, no one can stand in the way if you are willing to come, the Lord himself says, take away. In fact, let me put it this way. The Bible says, in the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, Paul gives us the revelation. And he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. When you believe, the gospel has the power to break every hindrance that would stand in your way. So the question is Are you willing? Can we look at whom this invitation is coming? You see, when we receive an invitation, the first thing we do is find out who has sent the invitation. Now, for you to understand who has sent the invitation, we need to go back to verse 13 to see who has sent this invitation. He says, I am the Alpha. Alpha and the Omega. Ate Omega. The first and the last. Ate the beginning Ze kusoka. and the end. Ate I am the one who personally invites you. Listen to who is inviting you. The terms he uses here speak of transcendence beyond anything you can imagine. He speaks to him of himself as the omnipotent one. The creator of the universe. The sustainer of life. And the consummation of all things. God Almighty. And it is inconceivable. It is, it is pride to the nth degree. Dala. For you to be invited. You see, if somebody invited you for a state function, the president has invited you. Many of us would be excited. You feel it is an honor. But here is the invitation. From the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The creator of the universe. Has sent a personal invitation to you. The Alpha and the Omega. Now let's break this down for you. For you to understand Alpha and Omega. I will need to take you back to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8. Where we see this signature. And the Lord gives this signature saying, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. Says the Lord God. Who is? Who was? And who is to come? The Almighty. Now, here we have the God Almighty extending the invitation to you. Now, you may ask how, if you talked about Jesus, now you're talking about God Almighty. Yes. 
you need to read John 10.30. When Jesus was asked about the same, he says, I and the Father are one. You see, God, the Alpha and Omega, Omega, is underscoring this. You see, Alpha is the first Greek letter of the alphabet. Alpha yenyukute soka mu munyukuta za zolionani and omega is the last letter omega yenyukute semba yo so you know very well that when you have letters katigobera ne nyukuta zino you can mix them up osobolo zitabula tabula and then you come up with words no no lyo ko jamu ekigambe ekikola and this can be matched to an infinite number katibino osobolo bisukuru makuteri ko chikombo as a matter of fact when you look at the vocabulary of languages today amazima wetegereze ebigambo ebyennimi ezenja olo Every other day there are different words that are being churned around new words are coming up if you have a dictionary that was put out 20 years ago the one that comes out today will have Com- a completely new volume of words that were not there. Why? Because there is development, there is an increase to a certain degree of infinity. You see, God created man in his image. And so man is able to communicate to the end degree. So his language is infinite. So in that with that concept. So we use these words words to communicate concepts to communicate what is on our mind to communicate our thoughts it, it, words often point to omniscience so what does it mean when he says i'm the alpha and the omega he says there is nothing that exists that is outside of my understanding there is nothing that is outside the realm of his knowledge there is nothing that is outside the realm of his power there is nothing that can thwart his purpose and plan so the one whose plans cannot be thwarted is the one that has sent this invitation to you he says I am the alpha I am the omega and he adds that I am the first and I am the this is an interesting title that he brings forward now for you to understand it you need to read Isaiah 44 and verse 6 and here is what he says that saith the Lord the king of Israel and his redeemer the Lord of hosts I am the first I am the last there is no God beside him when he says I am the first he's simply stating that I am the first cause see so we live in a world of cause and effect that is why the word because is so important vocabulary we say you have the word be and the word cause. So something is because there is a cause. Now when he says I am the first he says he wants you to understand that he is the first cause. And when he says I am the last he says and the only cause but I am 
everything finds its its purpose in me nebuli chimbu chizule chigendera cha chunga chiri munze it is the same school of thought that we see in isaiah chapter 48 and verse 12 yendoza yembe tula mu isaya na munano ni ba 12 and in this case it again points to the lord yahweh the lord god wanera bogera kumukama yakuwa where he calls himself the first Nga. and the last yeita oruberebeli ato wenkomerele now paul winds this up so for us so well paul achiumba in that wonderful doxology in the book of Romans chapter 11 and verse 36 where he says for of him and through him and to him are all things to him be glory forever let's break this down a bit he says for of him in other words from him everything originates from him and then he says through him so it transits through him and says to him in other words its purpose is drawn back to him all things the right of Hebrews brings this to us why he calls in the author and the finisher of our faith and then Paul brings this picture back to us in his letter to the church in Philip chapter 1 and verse 6 he says for I am persuaded of this very thing that he who began the good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus so the one who is calling you the one who calls you is not just the alpha and omega but he is the first and he is the last it is the lord god himself the one who says in isaiah 41 that i the lord am the first and with the last i am he Ze is again Aka. says in Isaiah 43 verse 10 and 11. Na dawo Isaiah na musato ni ba 10 He says before me there was no god form. Na sina ba kuba otebwali wo katonde atonde ba. And he says there will be none after me. Ah tete ni ba mulala ali zina ko. I even I am the Lord. Ze mwene ze mukama. And there yeah. is no safe here besides me. Tele muloko zo kujja konze. Now do you think when the first and the last gives you an invitation there can be an obstacle absolutely not and the bible goes on to say Jesus in verse 16 says chapter 22 the book of revelation he says I Jesus have sent my angel to testify to you the things for the churches so we see Christ Jesus himself as the author of this book which reveals him and he says I have revealed these contents to you. So he sends the angel to John to testify to reveal this to the churches why does he do that so that the churches who include you and I can take this same message to everyone and invite them to come to make a call to everyone who thirsts and tell them it is Jesus he is the solution to your thirst and he goes on to say in verse 16 
and he says, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. This is a very powerful statement. Let's draw a few things from here. He says, I am the root of David. What does he mean here? Now, root in Greek is the word Riza. Riza refers to spring from. So, it represents a source. The one who gives and sustains. I liken it to a tree. A tree cannot exist if it does not have roots. So here Jesus is saying, I am the root of David. He's in essence trying to say, David existed because of me. So he places himself as the ancestor of David. So he's saying, David came as a result of him. And then he says, I am still the offspring of David. Now, offspring is the word genus. So he's saying, I am part of David's family. Now I am a descendant of David. So the question is, how can it be both the ancestor and then the descendant of David. So what is Jesus trying to communicate here? Jesus is trying to communicate something important to us. Here he attests to both his divinity and his humanity. He's testifying to us that he's very God and he is very man. You see, as God, he is saying, I created David. So I am the divine root that brought David forward. I am his assist. I am his source. His line came from me. And he says, but I am also his descendant. So what is he trying to fulfill? Fulfillment of scripture. Isaiah chapter 11. The Bible says that then a shoot will spring forth from the stem of Jesse. A branch from his roots will bear fruit. And what is he speaking about? He talks about the stem of Jesse. So what he's talking about? He's talking about David. And here is fulfilling the prophecy that Jeremiah talks about in Jeremiah 36 and verse 30 where he speaks concerning the Savior and he says that he will sit upon the throne of David and rule upon his kingdom now this is fulfilling what the prophet said to David in 2 Samuel, Samuel chapter 7 and verse 12. The Bible says he told him when your days are complete and you will lie down with your fathers. I will raise up your descendant after you who will come forth from you 
and I will establish his kingdom. Now in the immediate context he was talking about Solomon. But he goes on to talk about the Messiah. In verse 16 he says and your house and your kingdom shall you were before me forever and your kingdom shall be established forever. What is the point I want you to see here? I want you to see what he uses. He says, I am the root. Again, he is declaring himself as the I am. The Lord. Now, he is the one that is inviting us. You see, it required God and man to fuse together supernaturally in order for our redemption to come to pass. A man had to bear the punishment for us all. But only God could drink the bitter cup a perfect man had to die yet only God is perfect a holy person had to die yet only God is his holy it had to take the human flesh to die and be buried in a grave yet it it had to take God to arise from the grave and grant us salvation. It had to take God to impute upon us his righteousness. And as a result of that, God had to make provision to put upon the flesh so that you and I that believe in Jesus Christ can then become partakers of the divine nature. So both the human and the divine natures needed to be woven together. A baby had to be born in a manger to a virgin in order for him to be the son of man and also the son of God so that he could be a man with. God with us and therefore satisfy the holy justice demands of God. And be able to purchase for us the righteousness that is by faith. So it is him that is saying come. Come to me, all of you who thirst. All of you, all of us are candidates of God's wrath without Jesus Christ. But he says, come. Because I have met every demand that God's justice demanded. Then he adds the bright and morning star. Now the morning star is a star that you would see after the pitch darkness of the night. When you see the morning star, it tells you that another day has done. The night, however pitch dark it was, is gone away. This sinks in with what Jesus says. When he says, I am the light of the world. And for you to understand what the star is all about, you need to go back all the way to the book of Numbers. When the children of Israel were moving from the land of Egypt into the land of promise. And on their way, they meet this king Balak of Moab who then engages a prophet Balak 
with the objective of planting a curse upon the children of Israel. And when he opened his mouth to pronounce a curse on the nation of Israel. Verse 17. He declares that a star shall come forth from Jacob. And the scepter shall arise from Israel. Now the Hebrew word for star is the word kokab. It means blazing forth. And Peter Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1 paints this picture for us. He says for we did not follow cunning read devise fables. When we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. For we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father, the honor and the glory. When such a voice came from him from the excellent God saying this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased he says and we have had this voice from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain and so we have the prophetic word confirmed which you do well to hear as the light shines in the dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. The one who calls you dear sinner is the bright and morning star. Jesus is saying come. Come and drink free. Today, if you hear his voice, come. So I ask the questions now. We all know that there will come a day when we find ourselves on the deathbed as we draw our last breath the question is will you see him on the other side saying come to me come see my face come behold my glory as you leave this earthly tent will you See him on the other side. Everything that you do will not matter. The most important is you have to accept that invitation. Why you are still alive on earth today. And I know that there are people who are hearing the sound of our voices today. Who need to come to Jesus. You know who you are. Your heart yearns for you. He says whosoever will. Don't wander aimlessly through life, thirsting after things that will not satisfy, trying to find things and connecting yourself to things that will not help. In Jesus, you will find the fountain of life. In Jesus, you will find the fountain of mercy and grace. At the cross, your sins will be forgiven. At the cross, you will receive the forgiveness of sin. You will receive life life in abundance and life eternal. If you can say this prayer the Lord will forgive your sins. The Lord will give you a new Heart. and you will start a new life. Say this prayer. Dear Lord of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am thirsty. 
Nenyonta. I am a sinner. I need a savior in my life. And today, Lero, I have had your invitation. Here I am. Just as I am. Without a plea, Lord. I come to you for grace. I come to you for mercy. I come to you for the forgiveness of sins. I come to you that I may be made a new. Save me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Write my name, Lord, in the book of life. I believe you are the second one. I believe you died for my sins. And you again on the third day. Lord of glory. I thank you. That you have saved me. Today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you say that prayer, by faith, you have been saved. Call the number on the screen. Somebody will pick it up and give you the first instructions in this new walk of faith. And end by speaking to the believer in Jesus Christ. He says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel with a message. And the message is to John to take to the churches. And you are part of that body. With the message to send to the rest of the world. Telling the people to come because Jesus is calling. Will you take that message? God reach you bless you as you do so. And from Dominion Church Dominion. we are saying thank you for sharing this moment with us. And God reaching you bless you.